guys, welcome to Algebra 1, Lesson 54. So we're talking about the graphs of linear equations. So we learned about a graph in yesterday's um, lesson. Now we're talking about graphing the equations themselves. We were introduced to the equation yesterday. This equation is that we graph, it's always a first degree equation, so that the highest exponent is one. Also, it only has two variables. And we notice when we graph an equation like this, that the equation, the points are always in a line. So we call it a linear equation. These three equations are all examples of linear equations. y minus 2x plus 1 equals 0, x minus 4 equals negative 2y, x plus y equals 0. They have two variables, they all are in the first degree. So they're all linear equations if you were to solve for y um, based on whatever you choose for x and then graph them. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna start with, I've got three examples for you. We're gonna start with y equals negative, or excuse me, 2x minus one. That's our first one. So we get to choose, remember, the values for x. It's our independent variable. So two things to keep in mind when choosing your values for x. Don't make them too close together. Also, don't make them too big that you end up with answers that are outside of the graph that you've drawn and have you have to have this huge graph, okay? Also, one third thing to keep in mind is choose values that are convenient, easy to use. That will especially come in handy if you have fractions, which you will see in the next example. So for this one, y equals 2x minus 1. This one, your book has us doing five examples. So let's go ahead and... Or, Five, five pairs. We normally won't do five pairs. We'll normally do three. But for this first one as our example, we're gonna go ahead and do five pairs. So these are the values that your book chose. For x, zero. Usually, almost always, we'll start with x is zero because that's a really easy one to use. Three, we only use one because we were just at zero. One is super close. Negative three, so we have something on the opposite side. 2, and negative 2, just so we have some extra points in there, okay? To solve for y, I have to now plug each one of these into my equation, y equals 2x minus 1. So I'll start with the 0. y equals 2 times 0 minus 1. Well, 2 times 0 is 0, and 0 minus 1 is negative 1. So for this one, for 0, when x is 0, y is negative 1. Okay, let's try another one. y equals 2 times, this time it's 3, because x equals 3, minus 1. 2 times 3 is 6, 6 minus 1 is 5, so y equals 5. Okay, let's try another one. y equals 2 times, this time negative 3 minus 1. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. Negative 6 minus 1 is negative 7. So y equals negative 7. All right. y equals, this time, 2 times 2 minus 1. 2 times 2 is 4, minus 1 is 3. So y equals 3 when x equals 2. And the last one, we have negative 2 for x. So y equals 2 times negative 2 minus 1, 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, negative 4 minus 1 is negative 5. Okay, now as I said, this should come out in the shape of a line. If it's not a line, that means we did something incorrect somewhere, so that's kind of a mental check. All right, so my first pair of um, ordered, my ordered pair would be 0, negative 1. So 0 on my x-axis, negative 1 on my y. Then I have 3, 5. So 1, 2, 3, positive 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Then I have negative 3, negative 7. So I count over negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6. And all the way down here at the bottom of my board, negative 7. All right, then I have 2, 3. So 1, 2. Up three, one, two, three. Then I have um, negative two, negative five. So negative one, negative two. 
negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. Okay, can I connect all of these points with one line? so it's straight. I sure can. Okay. Sorry, the last one because I ran out of uh, space in my ruler. You can see clearly that I have a straight line, except where I messed up my ruler there at the top, okay? But you have a straight line, so it's a linear equation. Okay, let's try the next one. Okay, so for this one, I have y equals negative one-half plus two. One-half x, excuse me, plus two. So when I choose my values for x, I want to choose values that are going to help me get rid of my fraction. So I know I'm multiplying my fraction by whatever that number is. So it has to be a number that I can cancel um, with my fraction, with my denominator. So like I said, always start with zero because anything times zero is zero. And that makes it easier. Um, then I'm going to go ahead and choose two because that'll get rid of my fraction. It'll cancel out. So I'll also choose negative two to have one negative number in there. And usually three is gonna be enough um, to make sure that you have a straight line, three uh, variables for x. So I'm gonna plug those into my equation. Y equals negative one half times zero plus two. So this would be zero plus two, which equals two. All right, let's try this one. Y equals negative one half times two plus two. Well, when I multiply by two, my two cancels out. So I'm just left with negative one. Negative one plus two is just one. Oops, sorry, my little sign got skewed. Okay, now let's try this one. Y equals negative one half times negative two plus two. Well, this time they cancel, but I'm still left with negative one, just like I was left with one here. Negative one times negative one is a positive one. Positive one plus two is three. So y equals three. Now I'm gonna graph it. So I have x is zero, y is one, two, here I have x is 2, y is 1. Now I have uh, y, excuse me, x is negative 2, so negative 1, negative 2, y is positive 3, 1, 2, 3. Before I even draw the line, can you see that this would be a straight line? Yes, it would. And I'm actually not going to draw the line right now just for time's sake. Okay, let's move on to your third example. Okay, so let's talk about this last example. My equation is y equals negative x. Okay, this is a really easy one. I can choose any values I want for x, but I don't want them to be too close together, and I don't want them to be too big. So let's just start with our typical zero, and I'm gonna do three and negative three. Okay, so if x equals zero, it says y equals negative zero. Well, there is no negative zero, so it's just y equals zero. So when x is zero, y is zero, because really it's negative one times zero. So that is zero. Then I have y equals negative, well, if x is three, it would be negative three. Simple. Then I have y equals negative of negative three. So that's the opposite of negative three. So there, the opposite of negative three is positive three. So y equals three. Really easy, right? Really fast. So then I can graph it on my graph. Zero, zero. So right there where they um, intersect. Then I have x is three, one, two, three, when y is negative three, negative one, negative two, negative three. And then when x is negative three, negative one, negative two, negative three, y is positive three. One, two, three. And then when I hold up my ruler, you can clearly see that this would be in a line. Okay? All right. Ow, my ruler. Okay. So now it is your turn. Your practice is graph the equations. 
y equals negative x plus 1, and x equals negative 1 third x plus 2. Remember to choose values for x that will help you to get rid of your denominator. Okay, so let's check your practice. For the first equation that you had, sorry guys, someone walked by. <clears throat> for the first equation that you had, it was y equals negative x plus 1. So you could choose any uh, value for x. I chose 0, 2, and negative 2. So if it's 0, you get 1. 2, you get negative 1. Negative 2, you get 3. This is what your line should look like, the line in green, something along those lines. Even if you chose different numbers, your line should still be in the same place, in the same general direction. Then for uh, y equals negative 1 third x plus 2, I chose 0, 3, and negative 3, so I could get rid of that fraction. When I multiply it by 0, I'm just left with 2. When I multiply negative 1 third times 3, I'm left with negative 1. Negative 1 plus 2 is 1. And if I multiply negative 1 third times negative 3, I get positive 1. Positive 1 plus 2 is 3. And so this particular line should look like my purple one. All right, let me know if you have any questions at all, and I will see you in the next lesson. Bye!